and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. And today we once again have toaster. Wave at the camera. <laughs> and um, where we're going is a place called Nockro Passage Room. Now I have back roads on. I'm actually not sure which way which way it is. So I will probably just kind of um, you know talk when I see a bit of road that's interesting that I haven't actually shown you before because. I'm pretty certain it's actually taken us past Kells, um, which I've actually been to a few times in recent videos. So I don't want to I don't want to keep boring people with Kells. Not that Kells is boring; it's a lovely space. But anyway, so I will wait until I get to a bit of road I haven't ridden on before, and I will tell you more about Knock Row then. Uh, it is going to include a little bit of drone flying, a little bit of cool stuff like that. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, so you rejoin us as we come into Kells, and this is all going to be new for me actually. I don't think I've ever been on this road we're going to be going on. But also, I just can't not show you Kells because it's bloody beautiful. Look at that, look at that bridge. Gets me every single time. I have to say, the CBF is just such a nice bike for um, touring on. It really, <laughs> I, know, I know it's ridiculous since that's what it was designed for, but. Um, what a bike, what a bike for touring. Two up on your own, all cases, no cases. It's just such a nice bike. I went this way before in a video actually, a long time ago. I just hadn't a clue where I was going. Come on, yeah, there you go, good, good Google Maps. Now, now, so, uh, Knock Road Passage Tomb. What a passage tomb is, is something that was uh, built by magicians a couple of thousand years ago. Uh, I say magicians because basically winter solstice, so the 21st, uh, I think it's the 21st of like December, <laughs> uh, which is the shortest day of the year, you know, darkness wise around these these parts. I don't know, is it everywhere? Actually, I, I'm not a, a whatever, I don't know what, who, who, who researches that stuff? Either way, right? So basically, magicians back in the day uh, positioned some stones and made it so that on the winter solstice you'd get a like a beam of light in along the passage and it would illuminate um, the interior chamber which uh, you know that's the time of year that it happens which is absolutely incredible when you think about it that you know they were able to do this all that time ago this road is beautiful look at that wall look at that. I, lo I love shit like that it's absolutely class um, but that's what they did you know they, they built this and <laughs> it exists now it, it's kind of contentious about what you know passage tombs are originally 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 for because you know obviously excavations do find um you know remains in there sometimes and offerings and whatever else but uh whether they were placed there as part of it or just people people placed it there because it was uh you know became a kind of a, a cool spot to go to it's you know, you know i don't i don't think we'll ever know unfortunately because obviously uh, written records didn't really exist back then and either the documentaries we're all gonna know about Stephen Avery for instance in a couple of hundred years and, and, and you know what he did or didn't do um, <laughs> because it exists in, 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 in you know digital format and well I mean unless digital format dies completely and gets erased somehow but it's it's probably gonna horses it's probably gonna exist and we'll probably know the story of Stephen Avery and all the other uh, great and wonderful and horrible things we've done in our time but from the point of a passage tomb what i love about that that stuff and why why it still exists is because it is made from stone like big big stones um same as castles same as you know old ruins like that fortifications made from stones and it's something 
that I personally look at that, what a view. Beautiful. It's something that I do personally kind of feel a little bit sad is the wrong word. Um, wistful maybe is the right word about because, you know, in X amount of time from now, uh, the houses we built, build, um, the sh you know, sheds, all that stuff, all, all our edifices, mo like 98% of them are not going to stand the test of time because you know, everything is made to a budget now, which I know in a way is a good thing because it means that in X amount of years, if we all die off, um, the land will kind of return to the land. Things, things will die off, things will get overgrown very quickly, which is, is certainly a good thing. But at the same time, it's kind of like, well, what if, you know, all of these apocalyptic show type things, you know, what if they do come to pass? What if they happen? Um, and people come back and, you know, they want to learn about about their past, about what happened in, in you know, in the past from, you know, our timestamp. And, you know, we have, like I said, everything is digitalized and a lot of things, a lot of things only really exist in digital format now. So all of that realistically will be lost. Um, unless, you know, one of the crazy mental things that people are dreaming up to keep that stuff alive work. And I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a scientist. I don't know this stuff, I just know bikes. But at the same time, I think that would be sad if all that stuff got lost and, you know, the Walking Dead style thing did happen. Everyone died off and whatnot. And then that's it. History history's lost and they're never going to know what maybe came before. They're just going to see the husks of skyscrapers and be like, what? <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? It's kind of like us with the pyramids. We see the pyramids and we're like, oh, yeah, we could, we could definitely build them. And then someone goes, oh, OK, build them. So and you're like, I oh, know, well, like... <laughs> I mean, we could build them if we really wanted to, but, you know, we don't want to. <laughs> yeah, we can't recreate the pyramids. <laughs> full, full stop. Anyway, the point of all that rambling was to just say that it's sad that, you know, ruins like this may not exist forever, obviously. Um, because a lot of ruins, a lot of, a lot of, you know, Irish historical ruins have, you know, been plowed over in the past and stuff. And that's nobody's fault. I mean, pe people didn't know the significance. You just saw a pile of stones. but. That's kind of what I'm concerned about for the future is, you know, where's their history going to be? You know, where, where are they going to get it from? And it's someone like me, and look at that view, look at that view. That's why, that's why we're out here, for our own bloody minds, because I, I needed this. <laughs> well, you know, where, where's someone like me going to go? What am I, what's someone like me going to see and have an interest in? Is anything going to exist? Who knows? It's the, the fun, interesting questions. Anyway, back to back to the trip. Kilmagana. A little a little town that I have actually not been to in a long long time. And I don't think I've ever been here in a bike. What a beautiful place. The views they have. Look at that hill. I like hills.
doggy two doggies hello and sheeps this is turning into a properly nice spin out View. Oh wow, stunning. Actually, now seems like a good time to say it as well. I don't know, has anyone, uh, well, I know one person has used the code so far, but uh, ultimate add ons, the, these cases, this one I bought, um, they did supply me with a free one there recently enough. And uh, well, number one, thanks to them. And number two, there is actually the, uh, there's a code, ooh, I just got splashed. There's a code there as a discount, Gorilla10, all capital letters. Uh, I'll leave it down in the description of every video. And you can get 10% off all ultimate add-on stuff and this isn't like i don't get kickbacks for this or anything like that i just i asked them for the code because i really like their stuff and i would like uh you to you know be able to use them for cheaper more reviews and i, I find them really handy for days like today when you know uh myself and toaster do have a a destination in mind and we don't wanna we don't wanna take the take the pp too much by going you know completely off the radar so i just wanted to follow a map it, it you know days like today it's perfect and myself and kazawaki have also used them previously on trips and it really does get you to where you need to go well that's my phone but you know the ultimate add-ons case thing holds holds it nicely so there you go oh blue skies are good for the soul do you know i wonder are like people who live in countries that are generally you know have blue skies let me know in the comments if you're from a country that you generally have blue skies does it just cheer you up all the time? Or do you find other things to, to hate about life? Because if I just had blue skies all the time, I would be a lot happier, I think. Now we are into Wind Gap. I think I said that right. Another small town not far from my house. Oh, look, a little lake. A little stream in a lake. Cool. Small, it's another small town. But to be honest, look, if you ever come toward an Ireland, you can just go out, kind of just randomly take a road. The, the, the good thing, it's a bad thing and a good thing. One of the one of the good things, I suppose, about Ireland is it's quite a small country, so you can never really get too lost here. You know what I mean? You can, you know, like in America or Australia, you could go a thousand miles out of your way. Uh, you actually, you you can't do that here. Um, the island is so small. No matter how far on you go, you're always only a couple of hours from going right. So that's one beautiful thing about touring here one thing i will say is you know the cbf it just keeps impressing me like this bike is very fun if you if you drive it on and obviously today i'm just taking it handy you know i have someone on the back and we're just we're going somewhere nice and quiet um so yeah it's just it's it's just a great bike for all around and like you know obviously i've been waxing lyrical about the uh, the jigster recently because the Jigsaw is amazing, but this bike for all around, for touring, you know, I have my top box on, myself and Toaster have nothing on our backs, we're just cruising. You can't really do better, you know, you can't really do better. This is, this is what life is about, for me anyway. <laughs> if you're an investment banker and your whole life is about investment banking, obviously this would not do it for you. <laughs> Now we are on final approach to Nakro Passage Tomb. Uh, Google Maps says four minutes. I have to say that was one of the most enjoyable spins I've had in a long time. And the other thing about bikes that I love, and I know again I'm waxing a bit lyrical today, but that's the way you're gonna have it. Um, there's nowhere that's, you know, there's nowhere that I would be like, oh, I can't go there because with bikes, nothing is a problem. You know, even if you hit a really narrow bit of road, like I can't get stuck on this road, you know what I mean? Even if I meet a truck, I can get out of the way um, whereas if you came here in a car it's just gonna it's just gonna make it less fun in my opinion if you meet someone 
because you're you know you're going to bury yourself in a ditch or something that is a great view up in front of us as well isn't it that hill covered in trees i hope i hope the gopro brings that out but i think that looks fantastic beautiful everything is beautiful today the sun makes everything better now apparently knock row passage shoom is just down here caution animals crossing we will slow down and be safe What, what a location to build a tomb. That is absolutely stunning. And here we are, there it is. Small stack of stones. Anyway, so here we are at the passage tomb. I will tell you a bit about it with the drone and uh, yeah, then close out the widjo. So Nakro passage tomb, uh, it dates to approximately 3000 BC, which is, you know, 5000 years ago. That's insane. Um, but it's distinctive for a number of reasons, including its extensive assemblage of megalithic art consisting of more than 30 decorated stones positioned in the two chambers and curb. Now you'll see those decorated stones, I got a little clip of one or two of them um, with my camera so hopefully they'll be in this little video passage. Uh, another interesting feature is the midwinter alignment of the two tombs, uh, east and west, to the rising and setting sun on the 21st of December, which again is insane. If you've ever been to Newgrange, if you've ever seen videos of Newgrange, very similar to this. Uh, while the passage in Minocro is considerably smaller than the large tumulus, excavate, uh, tumulus excavated at Noth, I'm so bad at saying words, in the Boyan Valley in County Meath, similarities in form have been identified by archaeologists. Archaeological excavation in Knockrow has revealed evidence for multiple burials uh, of cremated human remains within the chambers. A wide range of artifacts, interpretable as grave goods, were found within the cremation deposits including pottery vessels, bone and antler pin fragments, bone bead fragments, pendants and spacer beads. Uh, like, you know, Beads from space. Now I assume they're just to space out the other beads, but space beads would have been cooler. Uh, further archaeological investigation in the vicinity of the passage tomb has revealed cobbled and other indications of activity in the area. Cobbling and other indications of activity in the area uh, during a later period, probably medieval times. Uh, the ongoing program of conservation work at Knock Row, following uh, archaeological excavation and research, um, the cairn has been reinstated. Uh, towards the northern side of the monument and stabilised to ensure its long-term preservation uh, and a number of orthostats in the west tomb required structural attention. So this this is just, you know, uh, the preservation of these stones is very important and, you know, when you walk in, um, it does say, you know, don't stand on them, don't don't sit on them. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> even when, when I was there, uh, one person was sitting on one of the stones. So it's just, look, it's just a case of, if you do go here, please respect the fact that this is a 5,000 year old piece of history. And don't climb or sit on the stones. You don't need to, you know what I mean? You can stand right beside them, sit on the grass. <laughs> it's really, it's really that simple. Um, another cool, interesting fact I came across uh, while I was looking this up. Um, these two tombs do actually line up with uh, a larger structure, uh, which is on the top of Schlievenamon, which is a, a mountain not so far from this site uh, in Tipperary. I, I hope to get up there one day, maybe show you some, some of it with the drone, but you can't ride a bike up there, so that might be difficult, because, you know, this is a bike channel, so I have to go there on a bike. But that's also another interesting tidbit, so, you know, it's clearly, it's clearly, um, ancient astronaut aliens, or, what is it? Astronaut, I don't know, it's one of those, I, I did that show on Netflix. Anyway, I've rambled enough, so, yeah, that, that is everything I know, and read out off the signs at Knock Row. Ah, 
so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the spin out here with myself and La Tostarina behind me. Uh, hopefully you can't see her. I'll have to smudge some, some camera. Uh, can you see her? You can't. Sweet. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, as always, a very special thank you to my patrons. I uh, hope, you, hope you enjoyed this one. I know a lot of you do like these kind of trip videos, so hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, until next time, thank you very, very much for watching. Adios. Outro crew. Look at that. Not many better views. Not many better views. Bye, Outro crew.